It's episode 26. It's the ninth day website mastery program. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Perhaps you're watching live right now. We are live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. We're live on LinkedIn. Perhaps you're listening to us on the podcast or on the repeat. However you're here, welcome. Thanks for being here. As I said, it's episode 26. We wanted to find a way to continue to share more advice and insights about making your website work harder and for you to feel proud about your website again. In each episode, as always, we have four segments. We have the You Ask, We Answer, where we take a, a question submitted from the community. We take, we've got segment two, which is website stories, uh, where we feature a, an article or a podcast or something that we've recently seen. The website engine room is our third section where we share an app uh, of our choice. Pascal shares one, I share one. Uh, something that's going to make your life easier as a website manager and content creator. And lastly, of course, of course, we finish with the website call to action. Every piece of content should finish with a call to action. And, and so our last segment is the website call to action, where we give you one change or adjustment that you should be making to your website right now. So let me welcome my co-host, Pascal. You all right? Um, very well. Uh, what an introduction. Well done, you, to remembering all, all these things. So, <laughs> yes, we've been working behind the scenes, researching, gathering information that really it's all about reclaiming your online space. And on the website is is very, very important. When we see what's happening with social media and, and the weird changes to SEO with AI and so on, it's really a good time now to go back to the website, to reflect on the kind of experience you want to provide to your online visitors and make those small practical uh, adjustments. Let's find out what we're going to talk about in You Ask, We Answer. <music> Now, Johnny, I've got a very actually interesting question, one that we may have to spend a bit of time today on. I was working with a client, a filmmaker, that are doing great, great things in the north of England. And they basically, we were having a coffee. And this is pretty much the essence of the conversation. They were saying to me, I've been running this website of mine and the blog for years now, selling my video production services as well as promoting my own films and I feel like I'm just repeating myself I feel like I'm just going through the same things over and over again am I missing something and well we've all had that feeling uh so to begin with to, to my client and to all of you listening it's exactly the way to feel sadly that you are the expert you've got that curse of knowledge and you feel like you're just repeating the same basic stuff that you don't find particularly challenging, but actually your audience is going to find very, very useful and informative. But um, what say you, Johnny Ross? Well, uh, we've we've definitely all been there, and you sort of look at you know you, you whether you're writing, whether it's uh, podcasting, whether it's video, you always get to that point of oh, should I continue? You know, what's the point? Um, you know, are people reading, listening? Are they engaging? But the answer is, as long as it's high quality, as long as the quality is there, as long as it's helpful, you absolutely should be. And there's so many um, things that blogging can solve with inside the business even. It's not just from a marketing point of view. There's so many other uh, reasons to blog. I mean, one of the things is just a, a way of keeping yourself up to date and keeping you uh, in the moment and making, you know, uh, by by producing content, you're having to keep up to date. You're having to challenge yourself. You're having to think about things. You're having to think about business processes uh, and um, and how people engage with your products and services. So even just for that reason, uh, the, you know, the, there's countless reasons. But I, I guess in in the sort of quick summary is that we all feel like that at some point. But there's lots of reasons why blogging is so important. I like what you've said about, you know, we should allow ourselves to do content creation, which is more for us, for the team, and for internal purposes, you know, almost kind of creating a knowledge bank that others can then use, not not um, you know, always doing something solely for the client. But I wonder, and that's something you and I have tackled in the webinar series when we launched a program, whether the, the challenge or the solution begins by challenging the term blog, you know, th those four letters that somehow are so meaningful they become meaningless i mean you know if i say blog what does it conjure up in your mind compared to the person next to you so i think what we should do is remind everybody that um, a blog if you want to use a term still will have typically four 
types of content. So the first one, which is what you hinted at, would be the industry news. So you are seen and heard being helpful by reporting back the, the most important news from your industry and that of your customers. So there could be actually two you know, sides to, to the coin. So that's number one. The one that then comes after that is what people typically do is the practical advice, you know, the, the Q&A. And this is where often people say, well, I've already said that, I already explained it. And we can look at ways in which you can upgrade and upcycle your, your content. The the third one is is of course the free resource or the, the the free downloadable or whichever term you want to use, and then the fourth one is of course the company updates. I mean, I think it's important for customers to know that you know your organization is is going places and is growing. So, and I sometimes use simply the the mantra of you know what have you done, what have you been, who have you met, you know, as a way to summarize what the company update can be like, which I know people find a bit awkward, but I can assure you audiences love to know that you're passionate about you know what you do and you have interesting stories. So I think blog is is uh, is is the term, but you've got to train your mind to think, oh, that means industry news, practical advice, free downloads, and company updates. Yeah, and it can be in lots of different formats as well, can't it? So it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be written. It could be uh, audio, it could be video, or it could be a mix. So it could be you know if if I think about it, when I first started blogging, I saw blogging as the core of my marketing activity, and and writing a blog would easily turn into five tweets for Twitter. It would turn into a debate on LinkedIn. It would turn into something for YouTube. But I think it's slightly different now, and 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 it might be that the content starts. Uh, in as a podcast or starts as a as a video or starts as a blog but then but you know it can then turn into a blog it can turn into a podcast so so, so that's the, that's sort of the first connotation that I think is important to bear in mind that 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 people do have uh negativity around the word blog especially because Google um uh, uh, must be about four or five years ago now did demonstrate that it was giving less rank to blogs uh, but that was because people were keyword stuffing blogs um mm. and were and we were, were using them for the wrong purpose they were using them purely for an seo purpose now of course there's seo value there but it's all about helpful and resourceful content and as long as it's helpful as long as it's resourceful then you're doing a great job and it, it Yes, it can feel like you're repeating yourself, uh, you know, if you're blogging on a weekly basis, perhaps. Um, but it's about looking at some of the content that you've done in the past and actually enhancing it or bringing it back to life or making sure that it's actually still current and up to date. So sometimes it's it's important that you repeat yourself because you need to actually set it correct for the the, the year that you're in. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I, um, it's almost like so... A moved house, and we're going through, you know, the reasonably enjoyable job of <laughs> updating, you know, planning, painting walls, and and we went to a store to buy the carpets. And as I was listening to the lady looking after us, I was thinking, this poor thing must be answering the same questions with every single client because, I mean. I know nothing about carpets, Johnny. I mean, I, I, I probably last time I had to con be concerned about them was that ten years ago when I, we we had a house near Newcastle. So, and I'm thinking, but but that's the job, isn't it, Johnny? That you're the expert. Um, people come to you as a newbie all of the time. So, how do you deliver the message in a way that you know is enjoyable to you? Do you change uh, format? Do you change storytelling as well? But for me, it's also something we shared in Website Culture Action. Look at your stats, look at the best performing um, articles, and do they need just you know that element of re-updating? Uh, I've seen some clever things where people record a 90-second video summary about what the article is about. I've seen people uh, in embedding social media reactions you know, so you can do a lot of things that are not particularly time consuming to to kind of um, you know bring that, but that's the job. You have to repeat the basics over and over again. <laughs> and 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 I would say, you know, if you are stuck in that feeling like you're repeating yourself and not really, you know, should you be doing it, it's time to revitalize and it's time to one of the best ways to do that is to feed yourself full of 
ideas and information. So subscribe to competitors, subscribe to industry related news, uh, set up Google alerts, follow people on Instagram, on TikTok that that are doing similar things to similar products or services to you. Look at the competition. It's so important because you can so easily get left behind, but at the same time, you can learn things and and start talking about these things and you can still come across as the expert as long as you uh, own the content that's the most important thing it's owning it and it's putting yourself in the minds of the clients and and your customers and thinking what are their problems and how can i solve them and what are the things that i can tell them that are really going to help them engage and understand that we're the right people and lastly that thing about company updates well, that's about the personality, isn't it? People buy from people they like, brands they like. And the only way that you can get people to like you is by, sh well, sorry, one of the biggest ways I think by get of getting people to like you is showing personality. So revitalize and show personality and start engaging more online. Super. I always knew it was going to be a longer one, you know, of the you ask, we answer, but it's so important because it's so emotionally charged. And, and, and really for me, the message is, um, if you're feeling that way, it's not equal. I'm doing something wrong. It's literally, it's just the way it is, you know. And 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 take it back to the work that you do, all of you. And when you have a brand new client, you're going through the the, the kind of the onboarding, if you like the term or whatever. It's always the same bit that you have you have to go through. And and it makes sense to me that that the website activities will give you the impression they are repetitive but it's over to you to make it as enjoyable um, as possible i tell you what it's time to move on to our next segment website stories which i am extremely excited about because i've got a sneak peek of what this one is so let's dive in <music> Our regular viewers and listeners will know that typically John and I will select one article or a podcast episode or video and infographic produced by somebody else and we react and share lessons. But today we have chosen something that John and I have produced ourselves. Is this allowed? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, totally. we hinted last last episode that um with number twenty five. It so happens that if you do the maths, particularly when you think about the website engine room, we reached this incredible number of 50, 5050 website apps, tools, and, and tech that can really make a big difference. And we were thinking, what would be a helpful, meaningful way to allow you, viewers and listeners, particularly our, our, our regulars, to have access to this? And we came up with this idea of compiling and, and condensing all of this into an ebook called The Ultimate Website Toolkit, Volume 1. We have the subtitle of 50, 5050, and picked tools to make you feel proud of your website again, but I'm going to ask Johnny, do you feel proud of publishing this volume one of the Ultimate Website Toolkit? I absolutely do. I mean, we've, you know, we're in episode 26, aren't we? We've done uh, previously 25 episodes, which is two apps per episode, 50 apps. Uh, we just felt, you know, we, we want to make this like we preach, we practice what we preach. We want to make this helpful. We want to make this resourceful. We want to give you one place where you can get access to 50 of these tools that we've talked about um, to ultimately help you start feeling proud of your website again. So I'm really proud of what we've achieved. Uh, we've got a, um, uh, you know, every every new um, piece of content that we create on our 90 day website is there's an element of fun in there. There's an element of uh, a bit of uniqueness. Um, and, uh, and, and it's been, it's, it's a really cool journey that we're on in terms of what we're producing and yeah i'm really proud of the uh the ebook that we've just um just produced i'm going to share the link on the screen for people that are watching i'm sure you're going to talk more about it but i'll bring it up on the screen as well yeah no and and for, so for us it was the element of um fascinating to do some something that would be qualified as co-creation so you know for everybody listening it's, it's interesting to work with a, a partner and not having to do everything on your own we, we kind of shared the work and the reflection and so on there was some very very interesting co-working sessions to make decisions on design layout and so on um you know there, there was some difficult 
things sometime you know about well which one do we include which one do we keep to one side we did consider whether or not they should be grouped but we thought no actually the pleasure is in the pick and mix so what you'll find all of you is that um you've given always two three options whether it's about video uh, editing and publishing whether it's about keyword research whether it's about um, website testing and um, you'll find that we cover all aspects of website management now of course the, the intention is not for you to use all 50 that wouldn't be particularly wise but within the 50 you should find a handful that can make a huge difference now and i will um, confirm that all 50 have been tested and it's like got the seal of approval from uh, johnny and i so and and we use a, a vast number of those for sure yeah and uh, and if you're listening the uh, link will be in the show notes it's uh, the 90 day marketing mastery.com forward slash e hyphen book uh, if you're listening or watching live you've got early access because this is not uh, live on the the front of of the website it's not uh, there's no links on the website to get there the only way you're going to get there is by following the link that we have shared with you today uh, and so as a live listener or a live uh, viewer you've got early access of course uh, and um, yeah we, we I mean we want feedback you know what what tools have we missed what tools do you think should be in volume two um, and are there any tools what do you think of the tools that are in volume one are the are the ones that you know you get on really well with are the ones that you struggle with what do you think as well but yeah these are tools that as Pascal have said uh, we personally use or we use with our clients uh we've got lots of experience with them uh, and um we just wanted to share it didn't we yeah absolutely and there would be some ai tools but not too many we didn't want to make it too much of the ai website toolkit you know that, that may come that may come later and actually on that very point you know are, are testing regularly AI tools, and they're not all good. You know, there, there is a small number that I mentioned, but generally those tools have been around for a number of years and, and used by you, you and, and, and our clients. So for me, uh, super excited to make the announcement, super excited to give our live viewers and listeners and probably social media followers a 48 hours window to kind of go in, download, consult, and get back to us. And then it would be um, public knowledge next week, I would imagine. Very, very exciting indeed. So please do download and let us know and share and tell us what you think. And meanwhile, we'll carry on working on uh, volume two. <laughs> and to do that, we're going to move straight into our next segment. So these are going to be what some of the first tools that are going to be in volume two because we're on episode 26. So we're going to go into the website engine room. All right, then. So what is your selection for this episode? The one app, the one solution or kit that can make a difference and make life easier for all of us as website content creators. So this is uh, spyfoo.com is what I'm bringing up for episode 26. Uh, it's a tool that allows you to spy on your competitors, their most profitable keywords, the ads for paid uh, and organic search. It's particularly useful for uh, your competitors' SEO strategies, helping you refine your own approach to SEO and pay-per-click campaigns. So it's spyfoo.com. As I said, it allows you to analyze and spy on your competitors great little tool uh, and um, especially if you've got competitors that uh, just happen to always be there and you're like they're so annoying why are they always there well why not use spyfoo.com to see what their seo strategies are yeah, and there are other tools that do that. So just to be clear to our audience, you know, this is accessing in a very, very clever way public, uh, you know, information. You're not breaking any data protection laws, or you're not, um, you know, spying for real. This is just publicly uh, available. But spying through gives you that collation feature that is going to save you um, a mountain of time. So thanks for reminding us of that. So for me, I'm to actually. This is a pure accident. I can't be accused to be smarter than I am, but this is actually linking <laughs> to our discussion in that you ask, we answer about this idea of motivation, thinking and repeating myself. How do I update, upcycle the content? And I came across a, a platform that allows you to do a content outline generator using a bit of AI auto magic. So I want you to imagine a situation that maybe you're planning your next long form article or podcast or video. You've jotted down that piece of paper on your iPad, you know, the, the outline, you know, you've got an, uh, an idea, but you've got a feeling, Johnny, that you're, you're missing a couple of things. 
And you think there's got to be something else. So what you can do is go on the tool produced by seoreviewtools.com and I put the link in the show notes, mm-hmm. content outline generator separated with, with um, hyphen. And literally what you do is put the title of your article that you have in mind. You put a bunch of keywords. You can put uh, information like a tone of voice and, and a few other things and then ask for the outline. So let's be very, very clear. This will not write the article for you. I don't recommend you should write your own articles or at least have a first draft. But it will give you all the headers and subheaders and it's really, really powerful. And then you can go, ah, yes, of course, I should have covered that. I forgot to put it in my outline. So it's an assistant to kind of help you improve your own thinking. Um, Now, what do you do with the outline? Well, it becomes a brief for you, maybe for your colleagues or your suppliers, or suddenly what you could do is go ahead and write the article, Johnny, and then maybe there's a paragraph or there's a section that is sticky. You know, you're not getting the words you want. Then what you can do for sure is copy that particular outline in that paragraph and put it through a platform like ChatGPT, Perplexity, um, Claude, and all the others to get uh, an idea of what it's like. But, you know, a content outline generator to give you more motivated to create information online. Yeah, and that definitely feeds well into revitalizing your blog. Uh, So thank you for sharing that. You know, we're not on commission with these tools, by the way. Uh, It would be nice if we were. Um, And um, there's, you know, there's there's lots of tools that do lots of similar things. Um, But it's about just finding the tool that works for you. So yeah, it's, uh, it's good that uh, we're highlighting even, you know, even if there's a tool that can do uh, the same thing, you might find that it's a lot easier using one than the other. So that's why uh, we share some of these and great on the content outline generator. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for sure, if people think, you know, I, I kind of like what it does, but I don't like the way it does it, then always go to that website called Alternative 2 and then punch in the URL. And then, they, you know, people have done a lot of work to find you know, actually um, secondary and tertiary options. So very, very helpful. It's time for people to do something on their website. We're going to move on to our final segment, the website call to action. As you know, this is about the one change, the one adjustment that you can make right now to make your website work harder for you. Johnny, what is your recommendation? Well, I am guessing that most website owners need to do this. Uh, And um, I talk about search engine optimization a lot. In fact, uh, in our last episode, we challenged it and we talked about search experience optimization. So SEO could be search experience optimization. Uh, Part of that is your color scheme. So my call to action this week is about color scheme optimization. And there's two key reasons I mention this. Uh, of course, you can consider it from a brand point of view and and, and your branding and making sure that uh, visually it's connecting with your audience. But the two big reasons I mention it are accessibility and dark mode, two big things that you can't ignore. We've talked about accessibility before, uh, and um, Google has made it abundantly clear that it's wanting to rank websites better uh, or higher, should I say, um, based on the accessibility on their website. So how easy is it to use across different devices? Uh, how, f- Bearing in mind that there's lots of diverse users and how users use devices, ensuring that content is easy to understand, to read, to listen to, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're talking about the uh, making sure that colors are easy to see uh, so that you know you're not using a dark blue uh, on a on a light blue background, which just doesn't give you the contrast enough whatsoever. Uh, so, so ensuring that that contrast works. But the second reason is dark mode. So many devices are now turning uh, automatically into dark mode at, t- at certain times of the day. What do your colors look like in dark mode? Because I'm guessing that on a lot of websites out there, well, I know I'm, there's no point in guessing, they look bloody awful. So, so it's about thinking about what's going to work on white, what's going to work on black, re-looking at colors to make sure that you've got really good contrasts, but also that they're going to work on different light modes and dark modes. So color scheme optimization is my website call to action for this episode. 
You know, it's fascinating. Yesterday, I had um, a meeting with our web developers. So they look after a number of clients, but they also look after me. And I thought, you know, it's about time we look. At, we talk about my website. You know, enough about a client's website. And I mean this, you know, with immense affection to to all of them. But and and we were having this very conversation about the color scheme. I mean, I've had the same colors for a very long time now. And you know, I want to move on. But you know, I want people to understand that the advice from Johnny. Uh, sometime with accessibility, it feels going to be hard. It feels a bit of a chore, feels a bit of a gimmick. But actually, when you follow the rules, it improves your designs, in fact, because the, the color coordination and matching and, and sometimes contrast work much, much better. But suddenly, the, the dark mode is fascinating because we used to do dark for like websites in the early 2000s you remember and yeah. they really went out of fashion people hated them but now it's come back it's fascinating but i've got a client where we've discovered we didn't know but the web design agency are creating you know kind of design elements within the, the the copy of an article or whatever and we discovered those in, in, big white borders uh, around those graphical elements and on the dark mode it looks Awful! It looks like a shocking web from the nineteen nineties. You know, <laughs> it's so uh, true. I've it's... chosen something very practical again for website call to action, and I wanted to link it. This one is on purpose uh, to the ultimate website toolkit, volume one. So I'd like people to look back at their website to do list. Um, if you're a team leader. Uh, don't be mean. Just ask people to, you know, in, into a workshop and say, okay, what is it that we, we, we've been wanting to do for a while? There's always been pushed and pushed because of client work and so on. So kind of collect all the to-dos for, for your website. Organize, organize them. You can use traffic light system if you want. And then pick the top three actions that are going to really move the needle, that expression. And to, the top three actions that are going to really make a difference to your reputation, to the customer experience, and so on. And then look at the ultimate website toolkit and see if there is a tool or a solution that can help you take action and make progress on those top three actions. You couldn't not have that as a call to action. Of course, it has to be a call to action. Uh, so head over to 90daymarketingmastery.com forward slash e hyphen book. The link is on the screen. It's also going to be in the show notes. And of course, if you just go to the 90daymarketingmastery.com website uh, in a day or two, it will be on the homepage ready for you to click anyway. Um, but yeah, download it, check out the tools, let us know. Um, what a, a great episode. Again, we've talked about uh, the key thing here is about blogging isn't it so perhaps you've been running a blog and you sort of just feel that you're repeating yourself a bit or you're getting a bit tired you're getting a bit um uh, you're losing that positivity well we're here to tell you that keep at it keep at it and keep showing off your brand keep creating personality uh, keep creating ways for potential clients to connect with you but more importantly think about that resourceful that helpful content uh, and the four key pillars that uh, that pascal mentioned in terms of what a blog is all about um we've and and this episode has been the launch of our ultimate website toolkit toolkit volume 150 handpicked tools to make you feel proud of your website again we're certainly proud of ours we're certainly proud of the ebook and we'd love you to download it great episode Yes, absolutely. And thanks again for, for the recap. So everybody, uh, let us know as well, uh, as we are approaching incredibly almost the first half of this year, you know, what are your website challenges? What are the things that you wish you understood better? What are the, the, the potential obstacles? It could be things that you, it feels like as opposed to what it is, um, because you could really guide us in terms of the content of this podcast. You know, as you mentioned in the intro, we wanted to find a way to extend the uh, the impact and usefulness of the webinar series and the launch of the program. Some happy will have allowed us, you know, to go up to number 26. It feels like we could carry on. But yeah, let us know. You, you can contribute to the editorial guidelines. That's all. It's Episode 26 of the new podcast series, the audio companion to the 90 Day website program. For more information, please visit 90daymarketingmastery.com. You'll be able to book a discovery call with either myself or Pascal. We'll be back with another episode. In the meantime, feel free to send your questions, share your preferred apps and links to your website once you've made the changes we spoke about because we'd love to give you a shout out. But listen, it's bye for now and we'll leave you with a fun video and audio montage whilst you go through your notes and actions and we look forward to hearing all about them and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Cheers.